So do you remember that Nintendo Switch online app, the one we got to use for our cell phones that is pretty much an inconvenience to really sit down and think about it? It's weird because, of course, Fortnite uses native voice chat without any real issue. I think their quality could be better on it, but that could be something that they maybe work on as they go forward. But you can just plug in, you know, a, a headset with a microphone and just talk normally to people, even on other systems, cross platforms. It's pretty crazy considering on games like Splatoon, we have to use a cell phone separate to our Switch to talk to people. And it's not the best app as it is now, although they have made improvements. It's just hasn't really been updated in a while and no other game has been added other than Splatoon 2. It's kind of had a lot of us uh, assuming or theorizing that they're going to ditch the app and not use it at all, especially after Fortnite managed to get their own voice chat working on it. But what's weird about the situation is it doesn't look like that app is going away. In fact, I actually think at this point, maybe it was in hibernation until their online service, which technically was kind of pushed back, I guess, uh, to next month. Maybe they were waiting for that to launch to open it up to other developers. See, the reason a lot of us are thinking that now is apparently Diablo 3, the one coming out for the Switch, is going to be using this online app. It's something that I didn't really expect to hear about at all. It is very weird. This actually comes from Game Informer's hands-on time with it, and they, they talked about it pretty heavily. They talked about how when they're playing it, it's, of course, 720p in handheld, 960p docked, but they said that the frame rate seemed to be rock solid. The HD rumble was kind of wonky because when like meteors would come down, the thing would just violently shake the whole time. But uh, according to developers there, they were still just kind of working around it and they didn't understand how much more violent, I guess, it, the retail controllers used HD rumbles and that's something they're gonna work on because it would be kind of annoying if you're playing the, the entire time and whenever things like, as you as you could tell with Diablo 3, if you've played it, it can get kind of hectic and chaotic on screen. So you can kind of think if they're trying to have HD rumble work with everything that's happening, yeah, your controller or your Joy-Con controllers will just go crazy the entire time. Now, I was reading through this several times and their wording is very interesting here because I'm not 100% sure if they even know it's going to use the online app, but they seem to come away from this impressions with the, the idea that it was. So maybe someone there told them that it was because they and they put it in the article saying that. So I will leave a link to the Game Informer article down in the description if you want to read through it for yourself. But it is at the very end where they talk about it and they seem to link the online app that uh, we know of on the cell phone that used Splatoon 2 with the online service that you have to pay for completely. So maybe that is what Nintendo is shooting for. Maybe people there at the, at the booth told them that, that they were gonna use the app for uh, voice chat, which is kind of a shame. I would have liked to have seen them kind of work in their own in-game voice chat like we have with Fortnite, but I guess maybe Nintendo really is opening that up because consider this, this, this would be the first game since Splatoon 2, which launched on the app, since nothing else has been added, so it's been, it would be like the first game in quite a while now to be added, and it's the first third-party game, something we weren't sure if third parties were going to be able to use it or not, since even something like Payday 2 hasn't had a whisper of voice chat at all. Um, so maybe they're opening it up now that the online service is launching next month, and Diablo, as we assume, is launching after that. I guess we shouldn't be too surprised if, if this ends up being the way it is, since Nintendo still talks about their online app on the FAQ section when they're talking about uh, the, the online app alongside of things like cloud saves and, and I guess, so, some sort of, as we assume right now, Netflix-type service with their NES games, and we need to know still the other 10, uh, I guess. We shouldn't be too surprised because they still recognize it there. It's just, for some of us, I think it, it's kind of frustrating, and I, I don't really want to use that app for a lot of these games. So I guess uh, you want to get people together and, I guess, use Discord or, or anything else you would want to use to talk to people. Uh, I mean, I guess you could just I technically call and group call everyone in if you, if you want to do it. That's technically what they're doing there with the phone anyway, just over IP. Another thing that caught my eye here about these hands-on sessions with Diablo 3 on the Switch is they did seem to get single Joy-Con play to work. Do you remember how I talked about how I wasn't sure how they would adapt it to a single Joy-Con, but if they could get that to work, it would be tremendous for the game, considering you can sit down, tabletop mode, both Joy-Con controllers pop off, and you, know, you can just hand it to a person. Of course, it's not going to be, as we would all assume, the best way, the, the, the easiest way to play it, because what seems to be happening here is they are mapping the dodge roll to a, a motion control, where apparently you flick the Joy-Con to get it to roll, and that 
with how much you end up rolling around, I could see how that'd be kind of annoying. So yeah, no, that's definitely a spur of the moment thing. But they do say that you can have any combination of controllers, whether it's a single Joy-Con and then three Pro controllers or a Pro controller, uh, several single Joy-Cons, a, a, you know, a dual pair. You can do several different combinations to get, I guess, to four people if you want to do that. So if you have, you know, two Pro controllers and two sets of, or two Joy-Con controllers together, you can have four people playing. Just two people won't probably have the as good of an experience as people using the pro controller that has the right stick and everything oh and i guess the last really good piece of news for diablo 3 on the switch is it won't need an, uh, any kind of download that's that's a big deal for a lot of these switch games especially when they see them get ported from like the ps4 and the xbox one or even some pc games uh, and it has all of this content from diablo in it apparently they're going to put everything on the cartridge if you buy it physically at retail which is something that we've we, we've we've had to deal with i guess a lot of people have had to live with with the switch if you want to get a game that is larger than what these current cartridges would allow to keep it within reason for cost well, you just got to download the other half of the game, and in some cases, you can't play the game at all until you download that other part of the game, but it looks like everything is included on this cart, which makes me wonder if they're going to use a 16 gig cart, or if it's actually going to be larger than that, and maybe Nintendo's helping them out with it, or maybe that's why it's, uh, what, like 5 or $6 or something more than all the expansions thrown together. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. If they can get all this stuff uh, at 16 gigabytes or less, that'd be pretty impressive. There's also the possibility, okay, that the game itself is on the cartridge, but maybe one or two of the expansions are extra and you have to download them because they could technically say, yeah, the game's there. You just, you got to download the extra content if you really want it, but the game works fine. Then since Gamescom is in full effect right now, I'm going to throw more news on here since I have to put it in from Newswave tomorrow, which is going to end up probably being kind of long too, since there's just a lot of stuff to go over, which is Saints Row the Third. You remember that game from 2011? It was on the 360, the PS3, it's on the PC. Uh, I was a good Saints Saints Row. I actually liked it. I think my favorite Saints Row out of all of them is probably two. I think that was my favorite. The first one was pretty fun too, but that was of course because it was the first one. The third one was solid though, and THQ Nordic is doing what THQ Nordic does, which is go get some of their older games that they have picked up, which they semi-recently picked up the Saints Row IP franchise and everything. Remember we had that all that information about how Saints Row's back with THQ. It's technically THQ Nordic, but it's back with them. Uh, they're going to be releasing Saints Row III on the Nintendo Switch, which it's, it's kind of a surprising announcement. Kind of. Again, I look at THQ Nordic, who has done things like taken uh, Darksiders and remastered that, right? And they put it on uh, even current platforms and they re-released it again on the PC. Uh, so I'm not super surprised they're doing this and they've done it with that. Uh, Titan Quest, Da Blob, Da Blob 2. So this is something that they have been, they've been doing for a little while now, and it's not completely surprising. We even had just Red Faction, right? The remastered edition, probably one of the worst titles for a game, by the way. Uh, they even re re released that semi-recently. So THQ Nordic is going to be going back and getting games that they have picked up and just re remastering them and re-releasing them. And this is being done even by Deep Silver Fish Labs, which is just the internal studio that they have with Deep Silver. And it makes me now wonder if the next one that they have up could be, uh, could it be a time splitters? Could they take one of the older time splitters, remaster it, and bring it up? Or that second sight? Second sight, I still think, looks like the best one to bring up. That's, you gotta do a whole new time splitters, which they could also remaster that as like a, just get people ready for time splitters. But second sight, I think, would be really cool to bring up. And I think that might be next. I, I really do. I think that's the next one they're gonna bring up. But Saints Row the Third is coming to the Switch. I haven't, I haven't heard any release date, nothing that they've even said. Like, is it coming out, you know, I guess coming out next year at this point since we heard about it but as we've seen with switch games you can technically announce a release date for it and release it like two or three days later or the next week that's something we've kind of gotten used to at this point but hey if you missed out on saints row the third which it's been around for so long now it's on pc and most pcs sold now even laptops with like integrated visuals or maybe even the new ryzen chips that keep coming out in the laptops can play it anyway but hey, there you go. I guess if you want to uh, pick it up and play it on your Switch, you can. Saints Row is a fun game. It's kind of like a Grand Theft Auto. And I guess that I guess that could be a good reason why they might be bringing it up since there's no Grand Theft Auto 5 yet. But still, it's it's an older game. So if you missed out on it, it's fun. It's a parody of Grand Theft Auto. At least it's how it started. They made fun of Grand Theft Auto. I remember with, I think, the first one you had an island out in the ocean part that had like a skeleton of like a plesiosaur that was supposed to make fun of the Loch Ness Monster. Uh, rumors that were in Grand Theft Auto that were end up being pretty fake. 
but it, it's a fun game. I would just look into it. And if you're just curious about it now, after hearing about all this, you can technically pick it up on Steam for pretty cheap at this point. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it here today. Let me know what you think about all the stuff we talked about today, whether it's Diablo 3, some of the stuff we've heard about it now coming out of Gamescom with uh, hands-on impressions, whether it's uh, maybe the steady frame rate, the weird Joy-Con rumble. The single Joy-Con play is the one that I'm most curious about. I don't, I, just, I don't know. It's, it's going to feel weird. Of course, we're going to try it out here and see how it plays and everything, and that's going to be something on my radar. And uh, we'll see how that goes about the online app. Are you, are you kind of frustrated to hear about it still being around or do you just not really care? It's just, it's kind of white noise for you because you mostly use like Discord and stuff. But let me know, let me know about that. And then Saints Row the Third, are you interested or is that game just too old and you've, you've played it before? So you're not, not really interested. Make sure you guys like the video if you liked it, dislike it. If not, and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time for Newswave.